The warmest of greetings to you, and welcome to Happily Ever Teaching. This is the podcast to help you enthrall your learners in every subject under the sun using the best teaching method known to science, storytelling. To do this, we feature special guest educators who are passionately keen for your children to become amazing and successful human beings. I am storyteller Chip Cahoon, and with me today is... Hi, I'm Rob. I teach a Key Stage 2 class just outside Milton Keynes, and I've worked throughout all the Key Stages. Hi, I'm Helen. I also teach just outside Milton Keynes, and I'm currently teaching reception in Year 1. And today we are exploring learning outcomes in design and technology and music with a witty folktale found all around the world, adapted by us to be set in medieval England. You can listen to the story by downloading our sister podcast, Fables and Fairy Tales, or search our website, epictales.co.uk, for The Dragon's Heart. There you'll find a video of me telling the story that you can share with your children. And if you sign up as an epic educator, you'll also get a copy as an ebook or paperback illustrated by the magnificent Mario Coelho, as well as the full audiobook for you to download at any time. There are even some tips for telling the story yourself, and a whole heap of resources to go with the lesson ideas we're about to discuss, including any extra lesson ideas that we don't have time to fit into this podcast. Right now, though, let's continue our discussion with Helen and Rob and see what technology we can design with the help of Sir Fulladred and the Yew Dragon. Um, Rob, can we turn to you first for this one, for ages 7 to 11? Um, what would you be uh, planning here? I would be setting my children the challenge of creating a board game of the adventures of Sir Fulladred. Oh, oh, I like this This one. is one of my yeah. favourite activities already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I would ask my children to look at not only designing and making the game, but creating the packaging that it needs to go in, mm. the adverts that you would create to sell this product, all of those different kinds of things. And then within the game, you could create, I'm kind of, it's almost in my head, it's looking a bit like Snakes and Ladders and a Mousetrap combined between the two um, <laughs> so you'd have to create different sections that Sir Fuller Dread has got to go through and you could look at using different kinds of joins and moving parts to do that yeah I think it, uh, that yeah. would be, it would be definitely more than one lesson this would probably be at least a, a full week's worth of lessons you could even add in your maths and literacy into it as well mm. how much is it going to cost to make this game writing the script for your advert all these kind of things so yeah that would be and what sort of maths are you going to need to know in order to play the game because you know if, if it is something snakes and ladders or even mouse trappy then you're going to be rolling die aren't yeah, you or yeah. dice yeah a little bit of probability I do love board games and, and actually as you were describing it it brought to mind um, a board game which I really can't remember the name of I only ever played it once um, but it was this fantastic game that they don't make anymore <laughs> which was sort of like an Egyptian tomb that you were exploring and it okay. was basically going along rolling a dice and seeing what space you landed on but it was full of traps so you know you'd put your counter on one particular space and just disappear through it um, it was uh, and there was another one where where like a, a big tooth would come down and try and, and grab you. So yeah, that, that sort that of, thing, of thing. Yeah. yeah. They're great yeah. games yeah. to come up with. Yeah. And I think the whole art of, of playing board games or the whole activity of playing board games is something we really need to encourage children to turn back to in this computerized age, because that's, that's what keeps families together, isn't it? Doing sorts of things like that and yeah, actual proper interaction yeah yeah so many discussions that were had around the board game table yeah, <laughs> yeah. those aren't the rules these are the rules <laughs> that kind of thing <laughs> yeah. and uh, however good online games are when you lose it is so much safer and cost effective <laughs> to throw board game pieces across the room than That's to throw it. your computer <laughs> game controller yeah. <laughs> Yes. As we move down to ages four to seven, though, Helen, are you um, doing something similar with them? Well, I am thinking about Sir Fulladred's journey, mm -hmm. um, but more the fact that I felt like he would be helped out in this story if he'd had a horse. Um, oh, <laughs> I wonder why you came up with that idea. Can't, can't think, can't think. Um, so it's an activity I've done before 
when my class has been learning about knights, castles and things like mm-hmm. that is, you know, the, the knight's noble steed. And so I thought a great project, again, as, as with Rob's activity, this would be a longer project, would be for the children to design and make their own hobby horse. Ah. Um, and there's a lot of skills involved in this. I actually did this last summer with my reception year one children. Rob probably remembers it well. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they they sort of designed their noble steed um, and the materials they would use, <laughs> and and we used a piece of dowling. We used a sock, and the the sort of practical skills that came into it for the children were sort of stuffing stuffing the sock gluing or sewing on depending on your age range um some mm. buttons for eyes you know some nostrils um we had wool along did we use wool or felt along the top for the mane two little ears and it's just a project that the children get really invested in because yeah, they've got their, their own hobby horse um i managed to find sort of horse colored socks that took me a while <laughs> actually you know, i think colored socks <laughs> did i I think I did. <laughs> Either that or I found the ones, I might have found the ones you get that are black, but have a different colored toe and heel. I so think, there were some yeah, horses with, that, a blue, uh, with a blue nose and a blue yeah, heel. Yeah. That's what uh, happened. Rob, you've got a better memory than yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> there weren't enough coconut shells involved. There were not. You could probably add uh, that in somewhere. <laughs> do you, um, I do keep on thinking of Sir Robin the bold from the monty python and the holy grail (laughs) so you could add that as well (laughs) but yeah it would take it took i think it took my class a few afternoons maybe a week of afternoons especially with with the children my age because it was small group work rather than whole class work Mm. but they they it was just fantastic and they got so much out of it and they were able to sort of evaluate their horse as well um (laughs) poor horses Mm. being judged that way (laughs) yes that's definitely what i would be doing in DT with my age range. I, I like the suggestion that you just brought up there, Rob, of, of, of the coconuts, because, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's used to comical effect in Holy Grail, but it does bring to mind the whole process of creating sound effects is also design technology isn't yeah. it because that, that's what they are doing there they are um, using one sound to create another i think it's called foley foley artistry which is the art of creating sound effects um so like uh, in indiana jones for example all of the fights are done by slapping great big hunks of meat um, okay. so that you get that sort of punch sound effect um and i don't know is, is that something else you could do uh, encourage your children as as a dt project um to think about how they would create sound effects for a story like sir full of dread's journey through the forest how, how are they going to um recreate the squelching of going through the the muddy river without actually going through a muddy river yeah uh, yeah i would link it to music as well i think the creation of sound yeah yeah that would be a, a good a good idea a good lesson to do i did see recently finishing off on coconut shells on the social media somewhere you can get some that attach to the back of your bike Mm. So as you're riding along, it makes a just to confuse everyone. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that would be a great activity. I've I've done similar with the children before in you know taking a story like this and just having a range of either musical instruments or just objects. You know, hunks of meat, as you said, maybe not, but you know, just see what what sounds can be created using them and what those sounds replicate. Yeah, I think it would be a great activity for this story, as Rob said. It's got so many different aspects to it: the the mud and the grass and the sand and the. And that well now the horse it didn't in the original story but now the mm. horse. <laughs> I wonder what the vegan alternative to slapping a big hunk of meat in order to get a punch sound effect would be. Tofu. <laughs> slapping, slapping, slapping tofu. Hunks of tofu. <laughs> <laughs> really compressed tofu. <laughs> <laughs> That's sadly all we have time for in this episode, folks. If you'd like to talk to us about anything you've heard in this podcast, or if there's a subject you're soon to teach that you'd like us to cover, you can find us on social media using at Teach Happily, or leave us a review using your favorite podcast app. Please also share this podcast with your colleagues and help us start a story-led revolution in classrooms around the world so children everywhere can learn in a way that's effective, memorable, and enjoyable all at the same time. Tomorrow, Sir Fulladred and the Yew Dragon will help us explore history and geography. But right now, it only remains for us to say cheerio, and we hope to hear your story soon. So, 
Cheerio! And, and we, we hope, hope to hear your story soon! soon.